Dad, do you want to play yeah. a game? I'd love to play a game. What should we play? Strategio. Strategio? I love Strategio. But you got to promise me that if you don't win, please don't kick off. <laughs> Hi everybody and welcome to another video. I am very tired today, very, very tired because I took the boys camping over the weekend. It was great fun, don't get me wrong, it was an absolute blast, but I am suffering for it today. So I'm gonna keep this video fairly short and I'm gonna introduce five ways in which I've seen strategies fail. But first off, let's talk about what a strategy actually is. Now, I think a strategy is fairly simple. I'm not saying it's easy, but it's fairly straightforward. It starts by knowing what it is that you're trying to achieve, that painted picture, that true north. Now, this should be evidence-based. It should be insightful. It should be about what's possible. Now, I know if you get yourself on LinkedIn, oh my God, don't get me started on LinkedIn again. But if you get yourself on there, you'll hear people talking about dreaming big and really big ambitious ideas. Now, of course, we wanna dream big. We wanna think about those big things, but we also have to ground it in a level of realism. And that's what a great strategy does. It looks at the market, it looks at the conditions, it looks at what the customers actually want, but it also looks at what's actually possible for the organization. And that becomes the painted picture. Evidence-based, compelling, interesting, exciting, future orientated but that's just one part of a strategy because in order to achieve this bright future we have to ask the question why are we already not there why are we not living this bright future why are we not already succeeded and the answer to that question comes back to current reality so part of a strategy is truly understanding where you are and then identifying those problems opportunities those gaps between where you currently are, a realistic, honest view of where you are, and that bright, compelling future. And the gap in between, it needs turning into a plan, a plan of how you're gonna overcome those obstacles. That is a strategy. So it's pretty simple on the surface, but of course that masks a huge amount of hard work, a huge amount of studying, a huge amount of looking at the world in front of you. So with that said, here are the most common reasons why I've seen strategies fail in organizations. These are the five areas I always focus on first when I'm working with clients. Number one, the strategy isn't actually a strategy, it's just a series of wishes. I saw one that said our product's gonna be the best in the marketplace. Now, when you see these sorts of things, these wishes, these dreams, these hopes, you need to get that critical thinking hat on and start asking questions about these sort of vague, fluffy, dreamlike statements. So if your product is gonna be the best in the marketplace, there's a few questions to ask. Why is it already not the best? Whose is the best and why? What problems are stopping you from achieving that bright future? How are you measuring it? Who's gonna say it's the best product in the marketplace? And do you have the infrastructure, the teams, the process, the skills, the aptitude, the behaviors to shift your organization to build that product that's the best. Now this is basic critical thinking, but I don't see a lot of it often applied. So you end up with these big dreams and these lofty ideals that sound amazing on paper and people get behind them. But then when it comes to actually putting that into action, actually delivering it, there's a whole lot of guessing. There's a whole lot of 
confusion and misdirection and not quite understanding what it is that we're trying to achieve. So let's start at the strategy. Let's paint that compelling bright future, this vision, this true north, but let's look at the reality. Let's turn it into evidence. Let's get some data. Let's get some knowledge. Then we can start building a proper strategy. Failure reason number two is because you have a personality, a strong personality, a dominating personality, a go-getting, action-orientated, fast-moving, aggressive attitude that has become the company strategy. It's infecting it, it's inflicting it, and it's not a strategy, it's just a personality masked as a strategy. Some strategies I've heard which are just personalities in a document are things such as we're gonna win this race, we're gonna dominate the marketplace, we're gonna crush the competition, we're gonna go, go, go. And the worst one I've ever heard is an executive who put into a strategy this very sentence, we are gonna dominate the market even if we have to die doing it. Die, I mean seriously? Maybe that CEO, that executive, he is willing to die in the pursuit of achieving his dreams. But let's not inflict that on the organization. I mean, the whole meaning of life, the whole purpose of life is to be alive. So why would we kill ourselves in order to achieve some business results? It doesn't make sense. It's a personality inflicted on the business. It's a personality masked as a strategy. A strategy is not about killing people, it's not about dominating, it's not about crushing the competition. A strategy is about achieving something, it's about giving the customer something they're not getting from somebody else. It's about a bright future that's compelling and interesting that isn't gonna kill you. Failure reason number three, and probably actually one of the most common, is that the strategy hasn't actually been communicated. Now don't get me wrong, there's a huge number of company all hands and strategy documents and induction guides and posters on the wall articulating the strategy, but that's not communication because communication happens in the head of the listener. I like to do this little exercise when I go and work with a client. They'll have a great strategy. Maybe it's got a compelling, bright future. Maybe it's actually observed and acknowledged and recognized the problems that are stopping them from getting there. Maybe this is a really, really, really good strategy. It's just very poorly articulated and communicated. So I run this little exercise. I basically speak to as many people as possible in the organization and I ask them, do you understand the strategy? And the usual response is, yes, there's some top line things they might be able to recite back. Maybe they understand little bits within their department. Maybe they remember some of the numbers and figures. Maybe they remember some of those platitudes and empty wishes, such as dominate, win the race, win the war, go, go, go. But when you ask them, well, how does that translate to your world? What does it mean to you? What does the strategy actually achieve? You often get complete blank faces. Now this isn't because they haven't been exposed to the strategy. They've been in those meetings, they've read the documents, they've seen the PowerPoints, but it has not sunk in because communication is something they do. And because we all communicate in different ways, we like to receive our information in different ways, we have to therefore communicate in different ways, different mediums, different channels, different opportunities, such as the big company all hands, but then maybe followed up with a team meeting, maybe then followed up with one-to-ones. Now, when I talk about this, I get a lot of people saying, well, we should just over communicate then, but no, because if all we're gonna do is over communicate ineffective communication, that doesn't make sense either. And what I see execs doing with strategy is they're trying to make it efficient. They're trying to communicate efficiently, but in doing so, they're ruining their chances of being effective. Communication is hard. It takes a huge amount of practice and skill, repetition, resonating with those that you're trying to communicate to. So that's why I see strategies often fail is because they haven't been properly communicated. Failure reason number four is that the real problems are still hiding, they're still evasive, because what happens is people paint a bright future, 
they identify one or two problems and they start moving towards that future. But if we don't lean into the very problems that are facing us, we are unlikely to achieve that future. There's a couple of reasons why I think people aren't addressing the real problems. The first one and a glaringly obvious and common one is because the problems in an organization are often created by the executives and the management team. They are of their own making. So it takes a very strong leader and manager to lean into a problem that they created. But if we don't overcome these problems, we're unlikely to head in the right direction. And the second reason is, is because the majority of organizations actually have far more problems than they can realistically ever solve. So it's human nature to be attracted to the problems that are nearest to us, the problems that seem obvious to fix, the problems that are actually interesting to get stuck into. But the reality is, some of those problems we have to solve might be gnarly, might be really difficult, might require a huge amount of study and knowledge. It might require a huge amount of energy and attention, but they're the problems that are stopping us from achieving the bright future. So we don't wanna be solving all of the other problems that sit on the sidelines that aren't stopping us from achieving the future. But I see this over and over again. People, good intentions, solving problems, but they're not the ones that are stopping them from achieving the bright future. And then finally, failure reason number five is that people are distracted by shiny things. Energy and attention gives you outcomes and results. So it's a leader and manager's job to take that strategy, that bright future, those problems that we know about, the plan in order to overcome those problems and to divert and focus the energy and attention of the organization on solving the problems, on delivering the plan, on measuring the right things. But all too often, I see organizations that have incredibly good strategies, but people are off doing huge change programs that don't need to happen. They're solving problems that aren't actually in the way. They're busy rolling out new IT systems in the hope that it will solve a problem. Here's a hint, it very rarely does. In fact, often IT solutions make the problems worse. They're busy doing lots of busy work, but are they working busily on solving the real problems? Those shiny things are everywhere. And a manager and a leader needs to take the strategy and focus that energy and attention on delivering the plan, on delivering the strategy, on solving the right problems, not the shiny stuff. So there you go. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Hope it's been helpful and useful. If you're building a strategy, these are five things that you might want to look out for. And don't forget, a strategy is fairly straightforward. You need to know where you're going. You need to know honestly where you currently are. You need to identify the gaps and the problems between those two. You need to put in place a plan to overcome those problems because a strategy with a list of problems with no plan, that's no good to anyone. And then you need to focus that energy and attention on delivering the plan. Don't get distracted, focus. So if you've enjoyed this video, hit that like button subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and i for one i'm gonna go and get a big glass of vitamin c maybe some cough syrup and i'm gonna go and have a lie down to recover from what was an epic camping trip i mean the night sky alone was just beautiful anyway i'm solo waffling on see you in the next video Goodbye.